Yes, and you have the time and the patience. It's, uh, I think it's well worth it in the long run when you get those gems like that. Yeah. Now, this brings us to Gary McKinnon, the cyber hacker who broke into the Pentagon's computer and the FBI's computer and supposedly found evidence of UFO contact, aliens, technology. He mentioned something about there was a release about he, he found information about, quote, non-terrestrial officers and, quote, fleet-to-fleet -fleet transfers. Yes. And then, um, then you go into the documentary and say that we have patrol disks in the UFO fleet or squadron of UFOs secretly controlled by the U.S. military. So that could possibly yes. be connected with SDS. Yes. It's called USS, and number one, USS uh, Forrestal, and the other one is USS, the guy that headed uh, SAC. That's amazing there. And yes. uh, Carrie Cassidy of Project Camelot has done some really, fi uh, did a f really fine interview with Gary McKinnon. Yes. And that's worth watching too. If you go to the Project Camelot website, you'll be able to watch that and a num number of other very good interviews as well. He's a brilliant young man. It's, I think he has Asperger's syndrome, but he's brilliant. I mean, he showed yeah. the loopholes. The USSS stands for Uni United States Spaceship. Oh, that's Naval ships that could see are U.S. something, U.S. and something. Now, the, the U.S. government has spent over seven years trying to extradite Gary McKinnon yeah. from Great Britain. He's a British citizen, yes. and uh, there's been a, lar a large, long-lasting fight between uh, McKinnon's lawyers and the U.S. government trying to get uh, him delivered over to the United States. So they now, can silence it. Now, why would the U.S. be so interested in... A hippie type. A hippie yeah, type in investigating a something yeah. called UFOs world, when UFOs don't yeah. exist. I think well, if the government were smart, they'd want to hire him to work for them. Yeah. You know, he's brilliant, brilliant, absolutely. With um, with Bill Uhouse, I wanted to mention him too. He yeah. was a jet flight stimu simulator, mechanical engineer. We should say the late Bill Uhouse, God rest his soul. Inside. Passed he, away last year. Yes, and he claimed to also have worked at S4. Yes. And then you say that S-4 became a simulator facility mostly to train new pilots to fly our new aircraft, That's which right. would be, which would fit in why Bill Uhouse was there. And then you further mention in the documentary that Mr. Uhouse also claimed that at S-4 he worked closely with an alien named J-Rod. The one that yes. you mentioned that they put in the meeting, they put him in the normal white looking clothes yeah, and a shirt to try one, to make. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, it's spelled J-A-R-O-D. They had telepathic contact, J-Rod and Bill Uhouse, and that's part of how he translated his uh, Zeta Reticulin science that the, the um, corporations that were working with inside S4 mm -hmm. through government contracts like General Electric um, that were developing these type of technologies, he would translate it uh, to Uhouse and Uhouse would um, help um, fabricate flight simulators. That was Uhouse's specialty, yeah. flight simulator. In the big conference in Los Alamos, in they finally decided the Yes. The alien was able to convey through his co-worker, Bill Uhouse, mm -hmm. that uh, the reason we were making no progress is because it takes a certain amount of mental input to make their technology work, mm. and we have never learned to impart the mental input. Mm. Boy, there's, I think there's a lot of truth to that, and they also ended up calling Bill Uhouse J-Rod number two or yeah, J-Rod two. Yeah, but at that time, J-Rod was free out there. He had a special habitat. He could fly his craft around. He could go all over the country. He was not detained. Uh, Hmm. Then he got ill awesome. and passed on. The new J-Rod that is being treated at Los Alamos is a different entity altogether. And this oh, is focused on in volume two of S4 Informers, right. the Bill Uhouse material. All right, I'm going to show a clip in just a moment here. And then Bill Uhouse also claimed that there's a group of multinational corporations involved with the U.S. military mm -hmm. and with certain extraterrestrial groups. And they're covertly hiding the existence of ETs and their secret back engineering program. And that this group is acting at a, as a separatist nation state Uhouse also said that there was a, quote, satellite government, different than either our shadow government or the United States government. Uh, Edward Teller, here he's up in the cover-up. Edward Teller publicly stated he knew nothing about Bob Lazar or UFOs. You know, sometimes they say, well, I don't know anything about UFOs. He could be telling the truth, like Dr. Sell says, because they know what they are. So when he says, I don't know anything about UFOs, they, he's really telling the truth because they've identified them. And he claimed that he didn't know Bob Lazar, but didn't he help? Clear Bob him to Lazar work at S4. Bob a photograph standing in front of his house yeah. in Los Alamos with Edward Teller looking at a, a, a jet car that Bob Lazar had yes. built with an airplane jet engine in a race car. And there was a newspaper article about it too. Um, yes, go ahead. I was going to. Well, I haven't seen that photograph, but I have, uh, n in regards to um, Teller, it, he did, according to Lazar, hire Lazar for work at S4. So uh, Lazar's testimony states that he got the contract through EG&G uh, 
through with Teller's help, mm -hmm. uh, helping him get a position within to S4 facility to help on um, the gravitational work that um, was needed in the Project Galileo project. Oh, I see, that makes sense. You know, and also too, speaking of information that's coming out, we had some corroborating information that was supplied to two different people by the late Colonel Wilson and also supplied to you by Connor O'Ryan as a drawing and momentarily we'll show the clip of that comparing it. Um, Colonel, Colonel Wilson, Steve Wilson. Yeah, Colonel Steve Wilson. Yes. Colonel Wilson, he had, uh, he was given his testimony. Uh, and they had a copy of it doing the review or taking down the questions and answers and all kinds of additional notes. Agnes Sojak painted this painting by verbal description from Colonel Steve Wilson as she painted, with him correcting as she painted. You notice the one in Bay 1 is identical to the one that Connor Orion sketched. Notice Bay 2, 3, and 4 have identical craft with the same ship as Connor also substantially sketched in his drawings. In secret. Yes. He had never made it public okay. at that point. And, and what happened was Colonel Steve Wilson came out, found out he had a cancer, felt that it had been administered by his superiors because he, he knew it. too much. He was in charge of Project Pounce, which yes. was in charge of retrieving Discovery. objects, uh, uh, crashed aerial objects, Project and taken back to S4. Okay. And so when he, he realized he had cancer and felt that it had been given to him by superiors, mm -hmm. just as Connor Ryan did when he, when he finally left S4, uh, he went to Italy, and at Italy he decided to go to a UFO conference, met Robert Pinotti. Pinotti hired an artist to do that painting under Colonel Steve Wilson's direct supervision. Then Wilson uh, went uh, in the United States and, and sat down with Richard Boylan, Dr. Richard Boylan, and Bill Hamilton gave more testimony. Mm -hmm. They set up a hasty UFO conference because they knew Wilson didn't have many days to yes. live. Two weeks later, it, uh, the conference was about to take place the day before the conference. He dies mysteriously wow. in a Phoenix hospital and was never able to go before the media and terrible. make his testimony. He died of a fast-acting form of brain cancer. Phil Schneider, yeah. also yes. who talks oh. about underground bases and tunnels, he was found murdered within nine months after giving his testimony. That's and and uh, some of his most important testimony is included in this documentary where he outs a number of co companies, including Mitsubishi, Bechtel, General Electric, another a number of others who are getting all these uh, secret government black budget funding to do this yes. type of... of uh, of science and then seed it to themselves knowing which companies are going to come out with this new technology and so they know exactly which companies to invest their dollars in That's right. and, and become very, very wealthy. Well, it's business. It's, uh, it's all business. The good old boys yeah, network. Yeah, exactly. You know, I had another a little bit of corroborating information about claims that there are aliens at S4. These claims have been separately made by Connor O'Ryan slash Derek Hennessy, Robert Lazar, Bill Uhaus, and Colonel Steve Wilson. And I'll, as shown by the previous clip, corroborating evidence is there, Indi apparent corroborating evidence indicating that two different men saw these space these craft in the bays on level two at area S4. And also too, there were, was art made of aliens. So there's, we're gonna show you Colonel Steve Wilson's um, uh, results of the painting from Agnes Shojek who painted it? Well, sketched and had also sketched a tank holding the alien bodies, and Agnes Shedjax had made the same painting under the detailed description of Colonel Steve Wilson that shows six cylinders which show bodies in tanks being held by a band around the waist. And notice the regulator on the side of the tank, just exactly as it was sketched by Carter Ryan four years earlier. So I thought that this uh, might be enough confirmation since we had no other information which we could rely on to confirm the Ryan, Connor Ryan story, and I decided to release it at that point. Knowledge. That's and Wendell amazing. only allowed me to release it after it being hidden away for 18 years. Oh my goodness. And uh, Wendell, you know, in his older age decided, and wisdom decided it's t finally time to release this and make this public. Amen and I thank that. him for it. Thank you, Wendell. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, Colonel Wilson, there's also a strange story on the documentary that I won't go into now, but it had to do with a glowing plane, and he was unconscious, the plane landed, and then there was a strange glow around it that was witnessed by people. Flew for three days without refueling, landed with the same amount of fuel aboard as when he called in, with, dying at the controls, and made a, a, a belly landing and rolled out, or not a belly landing, rolled out on the runway, but he was rescued and, and taken to the hospital, and he survived.